Uh, next game, Panthers at the Buccaneers. Um, Buccaneers open up minus eight. It's up to nine. Uh, so these are two teams, again, that I was talking about before where they have there's a conflict here. The Panthers have a new coach and a new quarterback, and the Buccaneers have a new quarterback. So uh, who do you like here? Again, I'm going to fade the new coach. I think the quarterback will adjust uh, more quickly. So I'm on the Bucks here. Um, I, I'm not in love with this number, but uh, you know Brady and company didn't look great last week, but they did have a few good drives where you saw like, all right, this offense can really hum if they get things going. Um, but Brady just needs to, you know, kind of settle in, get a little bit better. And I think against a weaker team, um, this should work out better for him. It also helps that Carolina is very bad against the run. Their last 17 games, they've given up 30 rushing touchdowns, uh, which is far and away the most in the NFL by like what I believe off the top of my head is at least 10. I, I think they've allowed 10 more rushing touchdowns than any other team in the last 17 games, which is absolutely ridiculous. So Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are going to be key in this one. Don't ask me how they're going to split carries. I'm going to assume it's Ronald Jones until we see more Leonard Fournette, but they should be in good uh, shape to produce. Um, and I, I think the big thing for the Bucs is they have to eliminate mistakes. Um, you know, Tom Brady had a couple picks last game, which was uncharacteristic. One was on a miscommunication with Mike Evans. Uh, they got to get on the same page. One was just a bad throw from Brady. Very uncharacteristic. It was against a good Saints defense, though. Um, this Panthers secondary is not very good. They lost James Bradbury, and they're just very young and don't have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball. Um, so I, I think Brady will find more space and kind of settle for uh, – Settle for some uh, smaller gains early on to get him into the rhythm. That should set him up well. And I just want to note that since 2003, uh, Brady's Patriots were 42-18 and 18 against the spread after a loss. I didn't look at how many of those games came uh, during the 2008 season when he was uh, when he was sidelined. But the fact of the matter is that after a loss, Brady does pretty well covering the spread. So I think he'll bring some of that magic. Um, I, I hate fading Teddy Bridgewater. We talk about this every week. He's 19 and five against the spread in his last 24, star, 24 starts, but I'm still going the Bucks minus nine, probably one or two units. It'll depend on how confident I am, but I just love fading Matt rule. He's just, he has such, such little NFL experience. And uh, I just think it's going to be very hard for him to figure out how to beat Tom Brady in his second game. Yeah, you don't even have to worry about going uh, quarterback over coach because the Panthers also have a quarterback, the new quarterback. So uh, Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater did play well in the opener uh, for sure, but I, you know, there could still be mistakes and miscommunications that happen, um, especially against a better defense. And I think Tampa's defense is better. Uh, you know, I, I know they just allowed thirty four to the Saints, but seven came on a pick six, and I, I think that overall, overall, they did well. Uh, you know, limiting uh, uh, Alvin Kamara, and the, we we've seen the we've seen the Buccaneers do a great job on Christian McCaffrey uh, in the in the last year. Uh, so, uh, in two games last year, Christian McCaffrey just had 68 rushing yards in two games uh, on 38 carries against the Buccaneers. That's how good Tampa Bay's defensive line is. So, yeah, for for me, I, I I'm I'm with you here on the Buccaneers. I, I don't think I'm going to bet this game. I think this line's a little too high. Um, you know, considering that Brady might still make some mistakes with Mike Evans. You know, if there's an unfortunate pick six again, that could mean the Panthers cover just, just flukily. But I, I do think, I do think the Buccaneers rebound and, and win this game, but um, yeah, I'm not going to bet this one. Yeah, that's definitely fair. The other, the other um, impact of this game is Teddy Bridgewater does not turn over the ball that much. Like as good as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense is like, it's it's really hard to cover nine if the quarterback doesn't turn the ball over. So they'd have to completely um, stop the Panthers on multiple occasions just to avoid them getting points without you know without relying on turnovers. So that's always tough. But one last point before before I move off of this game, the the Bucks between the turnovers and the blocked field goal, the Saints got seventeen points um, off of not pseudo turnovers, but being put in really good field position. So I think if they can limit um, the uh, the field position uh, battle or if they can win the field position battle against the Panthers, they should be in good shape. Yeah, the two guys colliding on the kickoff was very tilting, I should say. <laughs> yeah. um, I was like, okay, maybe they have a chance to come back. And no, <laughs> like right away, no. 